You know, what we call the Lord's Prayer is actually not the Lord's Prayer. So we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven is religious. That prayer is not prayer. The disciples of Jesus came to Jesus and asked Jesus to teach them to pray. And Jesus had to summarize. So it was a teaching on prayer. It was not a prayer. He says teach us to pray. So Jesus was teaching them how to pray. So what we call the Lord's prayer is actually a model of prayer. That means if you want to pray, follow this structure. It's not repeating the Lord's prayer. Because actually the Lord's prayer is in John 17. Where Jesus prayed for the disciples, prayed for the world. And pray for the for all believers. That's the Lord's prayer. What you see in Luke 11 is not the Lord's prayer. It's the model of prayer. Because they asked to be taught. So that you see our father was a teaching. It wasn't a prayer. Are you following what I'm teaching you? So now listen to me. We're going to follow seven steps. I'm going to state them. Maybe later I'm going to see, say that as a, as a full teaching. Are you following that? Now, number one, he says our father so Jesus was teaching them something about the relevance of prayer that they needed to understand he was telling them number one when you want to pray you must no longer see God just as God but as what father which means our prayer will change when we acknowledge God not as just God but as what father that is the key to new testament prayer father that word father it is the key to new testament prayer it gives you confidence that you are, it is not like Elijah coming to God. It's a son coming to a father. So the confidence level is different. Number two, he says, A father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It is not a prayer, it is a teaching on prayer. So number two, hallowed be thy name is called the prayer of praise. Because when you acknowledge God as Father, who has, who has given you access into His presence, the first thing you need to do to the Father is to hallow Him. So you don't begin prayer by doing warfare. You don't begin prayer by making requests. You begin prayer by hallowing His name. We call that prayer of what? Praise. Never go into prayer until you have praised God. And praising God is not only songs, it is words. You praise him for his name. You praise him for his infinite creation. You praise him for his magnificent attributes. Oh Lord, you are omnipotent. Who can be compared to you? All power belongs to you. And you sing power and might belongs to our God forever and ever. Amen. It's part of praise. You are hallowing his name. We call it the prayer of praise. I'm teaching you guys how to see how to pray. Today in my three hour prayer, I spent one hour only on hallowing God. Are we following this thing? Number two, sorry, number three, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. What does it mean to say thy kingdom come? Now the word come in Greek is echomai. Now echomai means that it, it does not mean that the kingdom is far and it must now come. No. The word echomai means to show itself. That means the thing is there, but it must be revealed. Echomai means to be established. So God's kingdom is already on earth and functioning through our hearts, but it must be established in the hearts of other people. It also means to become known. That's the word come. It also means to influence. So when Jesus says thy kingdom come, he says thy kingdom should be established. Thy kingdom should influence the lives of men. So we call that the prayer of intercession, which is the second key. So first is our father, the acknowledgement of God's fatherhood, which means he has given you access as a son to approach him. So you don't think you are coming to God because you did some good thing number two he says hallowed be the name that's the prayer of praise number three thy kingdom come thy will so God wants his kingdom and his will to be done are you following this we call that intercession anytime you are interceding for people you are actually making God's kingdom be established in their lives and his will be done on earth so intercessors are those who pray the will of God down are we following this so thy kingdom come means an enforcement of God's will on earth 
you enforce the will of God. That's prayer of intercession. Number four, forgive us our sins. We call that the prayer of sincerity and brokenness. The prayer of sincerity of and brokenness. So in your prayer life, if the Holy Ghost shows you a place you were wrong, you must be sincere by acknowledging it and you must be broken before God that what you did was wrong. The way you kiss the guy's mouth like trophy, that the Holy Ghost told you that what you did was wrong. You put your mouth down and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Mekasa, Mekasa. It's a message. It's a message. I can't be so potai, Cecilia. We call it, it says, Forgive us this day. So it's a prayer of sincerity. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. One year, you can't be that sons of God made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus it doesn't matter what I do I'm so positioned in Christ you see some of us have a relationship with him so we can't mess up and pretend that we didn't know what we have done no no I have a soft spot with him I can't have a problem with my wife and be doing morning devotion some of you are strong you are powerful you are very powerful you can fight. In fact, in so hey, what's here? Oh, Jimmy, you finish. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world. <laughs> you are very powerful. I'm telling you, you are too powerful as a Christian. I don't know how you are doing it. <laughs> I don't know where you get your grace from. I told you of the pastor that went to South Africa to go and do a ministers' conference, and then he he went a bit late, so they were having worship, and one of the pastors has lifted up his hands, and he he wanted to. Um, get some space to pastor to go and sit down but the guy was in the spirit and whilst he was going through his leg stepped on the pastor's leg and the pastor opened well. are you stupid are you foolish come on move move foolish boy and the, the guy moved and then he lifted up his hands and continued the worship like that we glorify how no how do you do this you see we don't get this thing you have to fix some problems if you have fought with somebody, you know what he did was not right. Eh? There, there are genuine fights. And there are ungenuine fights. That one, you know your heart. You see, your heart, you can't lie to your heart. The Holy Ghost will tell you what you did was wrong. What you said to your mother was wrong. And you are speaking in tongues. Karibaba, 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 shataka, balendo. The Holy Ghost says, say sorry. Pashiki, palambra, baba, sikepe. Say sorry. Heshke, panda, kapuye, kepolo. Hele, hepa, kuku. Hikimu, kumbrasa. Meba, say sorry. Heskupu, suskalasha. Eplosko, skablando, skoto. And the Holy Ghost is gone. He's gone. Sincerity. Tell somebody sincerity. You see, the difference between Saul and David was sincerity. They both sinned. But you know what Saul said? He says, take not the throne from me. You know what David said? Take not your spirit from me. When Saul sinned, he was more concerned about the throne than his God and his relationship with him. That's what many Christians don't understand. See, when you're working with God, forget about your gift. I don't care. Many of you are saying, oh, this man is a blessed teacher. He can teach the word. He can prophesy. He can... See, forget about that. When I'm with God, I'm nothing. I'm naked. It doesn't mean anything to me. Whether I'm a right reverend or a bishop, that doesn't mean. See, when you are before God, remove your title. Throw it somewhere. You are nothing except by the grace of God. We are who we are by the grace of God. So when you are broken, you, you put your throne. Say, David learned to put his throne aside when he was before God. Number six or number five. He says, lead us not into temptation. We call that the prayer of consecration. This, this teaching is just too powerful. It's the prayer of consecration. So you have to learn to pray consecrated prayer. Father, deliver me from temptation. I have a prayer I've typed in my prayer room. Lord, deliver me from strange women, from lust, from immorality, and from adultery. Today I prayed it. It's a prayer of consecration. Your father married 10 and gave birth to 300. <laughs> he gave birth to a nation you should know that that tendency inside you for women is there you have to pray break my will break my last we call it prayer of consecration many of you don't pray it and Jesus is teaching us in this model so he's not reciting it 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. It's not reciting. Prayer of consecration. Lead us not into temptation. In other words, lead us not into enticement to sin. Arising from within and without. It's, you see, lead us not to temptation means that lead us not to a place where we rebel against your purposes. It's an enticement. Listen, enticement, enticement. Phone can entice you. A well system can entice you. I'm telling you the truth. You have to be you have to pray to be delivered from temptation. Lift your hands, say, Father, deliver me from temptation in Jesus name you have to pray that prayer if not one day you find yourself in the wrong place and you don't know what to do when I back hit against the wall so he will make a way for you <laughs> where there seems to be no way lead us not into temptation you have to pray this prayer Lord lead me not into temptation because listen listen <laughs> you don't know most of people who fell into temptation it was, it was not because they planned it they were led. He says, lead us not. That means <laughs> your leadings. <laughs> Satan can be leading you like this. <laughs> then you are following. You are following. You are following. So he says, lead us not. So sometimes Satan plans a route for you. Now, of course, so January, then he's preparing you. February, he's preparing you. Your, your birthday is April. Then he's preparing you. Then he's moving you. But when he says, lead us not, then God will change the route. <laughs> so, so whilst you're on your way to the ladies' house, by the time you tend, you are in front of a church. We call it leaders, Lord. Tell somebody, leaders, Lord. <laughs> hey, leaders, Lord. It's called prayer of consecration. Listen, hey, don't see, don't think you are a big guy. Oh. Don't think you are a big boy. Don't think it. I'm telling you because even your pastor, he doesn't trust himself. David said, cleanse me from secret sins. Are you more spiritual than David? He does not. Lord, lead me not. Please don't let me fall. Please don't let me fall. You have to pray that prayer. Every day, if possible. Let me not fall. Tell somebody, Lord, let me not fall. Teaching good, teaching good. And number six, he said, deliver us from evil. When you read the New King James, he says, deliver us from the evil one. Both of them are correct. And I'll explain why. Deliver us from evil. Huh? Evil there is a system programmed to be against your life. But the NKJV, which is deliver us from the evil one, is the person. So you must be delivered from both the system and the person. Please, are you following what I'm teaching you? So, to, for you to be delivered from Satan, it is called warfare. To be delivered from the system of evil is called prayer of protection. So, one is prayer of warfare, the other is prayer of protection. People think we don't pray protection prayers. Don't joke with protection prayers, it works. So, deliver us from evil means to be delivered, to, to be it means what? Prayer of what? Prayer of what? Protection. Deliver us from the evil one is prayer of warfare. So one is a system. Evil is a system that Satan programs against believers. So the evil one plus, plus evil. So it is a good thing to pray for God to deliver you from trouble. Deliver you from accident. Deliver you. And I must have an answer I conclude. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. It's also called the prayer of praise. And there's a reason why it began with praise and ended with praise. Because praise is a sandwich system in prayer. You begin prayer with praise and you end prayer with praise. That is why in every mature prayer, we start by praising God. And we end by praising Him. Father, we thank you that you have answered us because you are great. You are all powerful. And your word declares that if you ask anything according to your will, you hear us. You hear the prayers of the righteous. That's why we are here. It's a prayer of praise. 